me is you're a bit of an inspiration with over 52,000, I think it is, Twitter followers, uh, people that, that love everything you do and say across the globe. Um, so thank you for inspiring others to do what uh, we do. Um, but let's just get straight into it. I guess um, you've done and still do so much for education. Uh, give us a bit of a rundown on your career and what have been the highlights. Well, um, my, my career was uh, in education. Um, I spent 34 um, years as a secondary education teacher here in, in America. Uh, uh, um, I was an English teacher, and I had the, the um, my, my career span from 6th grade through 12th grade over that 34-year period. Uh, oh. Then after I retired from public education, I went into higher education for about six years, uh, working with uh, kids who were going to become English teachers. I was a, a methods teacher, and I would observe student teachers. Uh, so I did that for six years. So basically, I've done 40 years in the classroom. And then after that... Um, social media and that's that has become my second career so I guess you would call me a professional social media educator um, I've been doing that oh god since um, probably 2008 um, how I got involved with social media I was uh, I was teaching in, in a small college and not many of the professors there were, were using technology I, I figured you know as an English teacher for 34 years I could go in and teach anybody to be an English teacher and the very first class that I had, I realized I had no idea what the hell I was doing. <laughs> In fact, um, I, I tried to look for um, professors, college professors, who were use, successfully using technology in education and also successful at teaching how to use technology. And I found that there, there were no such groups to go to. So I formed my own group on, um, on LinkedIn. It was called the Technology Using Professors Group. And um, that I opened up to anyone who was a college professor who was interested in using technology or if they were using technology just to get those discussions going um, and from there I discovered what Twitter was and then I migrated over to Twitter um, and, and, and um, that's when I began to realize that, that your personal learning network that you develop uh, enables people to uh, direct their own learning and in directing your own learning you kind of pick and choose where you want to go at the rate that you have to go based on what it is that you need to know. So um, all of this really appealed to me, which is why I jumped on the PLN bandwagon. And um, it, it's, it's carried me through you know, all these years later so that um, you know, I've traveled around the United States. I've been to other countries. Uh, I've been to Qatar for the last three years. Um, I got to go to the Luke Skywalker Ranch, which I thought was great. I've become a writer for Edutopia. Uh, I've become an author. My book just came out uh, two weeks ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's been something that, that um, as a retired educator starting another profession, I, I never thought would be available to me. But I get to, to do what I love to do every day, which is great. That's amazing. Uh, it's such an inspirational story for, I guess, someone like me that's sort of just getting into my the meeting of my career now, so I think it's exciting to see what you've done and, and where you're still going. I guess uh, innovation at the moment is a big discussion point. What does innovation mean to you, and how do you uh, model innovation in the work that you do? <coughs> I, you know, people often think of innovation where you have to actually invent something, um, some kind of product or, or, or something like that. I, you know, in education, it, it's completely different. It, it really requires um, a unique or fresh approach to something. Uh, w one of the things that, that I enjoy through the social media, I, I mean, we've always had collaborative learning. Collaborative learning has been with education from the very beginning. <clears throat> and, and it was always um, required that in order to collaborate with somebody, you had to be face-to-face -face with them. Technology has changed that, that whole dynamic so that collaboration now has no borders. Um, th there, are, there are no physical borders. There are no time borders. People can collaborate globally, um, and, and 
the technology has given us the ability to do that. And, and not only that, we can collaborate in, in huge numbers that we've never been able to collaborate before. So um, technology is a game changer for that kind of thing. And, and, and collaboratively, we all learn better. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Certainly, um, I, I don't know where the saying came from, but, but when you've got 20 very smart people in a room, the smartest person is the room itself. <laughs> And, and um, you know, with, with that in mind, it gives us a power to, to um, go beyond our own limitations and, and use other people to gain the knowledge that we are seeking. Uh, it, it enables us to direct our learning. Unfortunately, not most connected educators, most people don't know what it is they don't know. And, mm. and, and that's something that they have to explore. And, and the idea of social media gives us the ability to explore those things that we know nothing about, that we're just learning about. And, and those things that, that we need to learn about, we can expand our knowledge just by connecting with other people who have a knowledge of that very subject that we want to learn about to share those ideas. So, you know, as far as innovation goes, the, um, once again, we've always had collaborative learning but with the social media enabling us to take collaborative learning um, to, to a completely different level than, than we've ever been able to do before. And hopefully it will just continue to get better as technology develops. Yeah, I think that's such a valid point as well. You mentioned earlier on about your, um, your book that's come out, so you're a published author now, and your book, uh, The Relevant Educator. Um, it's all about, uh, and I haven't read it yet, but I'm planning on, it's in my wish list in my ready to get, but um, it's all about how connectedness empowers learning. Um, so tell us a little bit more about this. Well, um, unfortunately, so far, um, you know, at least in America, uh, I think Australia too, I've got many, you know, I'm involved with many Australian educators. Um, the whole idea of using social media for collaborative learning and developing a professional or personal learning network hasn't picked up with, with educators yet. Uh, I, I read recently where uh, Twitter, the majority of the tweets are education tweets, and, and that may very well be true, but that doesn't mean that a majority of people on Twitter are educators. Mm -hmm. Educators tend to tweet quite a bit, so uh, the small number of educators that we have on Twitter are doing a great job of, of tweeting all the information that they, they need to tweet out there. But, but the point that I'm, I'm trying to get to is that um, we've got in, in America something like 7.2 million educators, and the best numbers I can figure out on social media um, do not even get to a million. Uh, so, so there's a who may be involved with social media, but they're not using it as a professional learning tool. Uh, they may be using it to keep in touch with their kids. Uh, they may be using it to keep in touch with their friends, but they're not using it as a tool for learning. And, and that's one of the things that, that we have to, to um, change. We've got to change a lot of the myths about social media. Uh, there are many myths out there that people believe that, that just are not true. And we've got to try to gain its acceptance as a tool for learning. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I was actually involved in a little bit of a discussion last night with some, some other educators about people who lurk, lurkers who are sitting in the background. What are your thoughts about how, how do we engage people in conversation and, and should we encourage that? Well, yeah, we should. Um, lurking is part of the process. Mm. Uh, you've got to realize that in social media there's an entire uh, culture that is different. Uh, in our everyday life, or, or as educators in the, in the culture of education. Uh, so in order to, to uh, involve oneself in the culture, you really have to understand it first, and that's where lurking comes in. Uh, if, if someone is connected and they can begin to observe for a while what's taking place and begin to get a feel for it, they will be a little bit more comfortable uh, entering into that, that culture of learning. And, and that, once they start to engage people, that is when the, their learning curve goes up. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the more you involve yourself, the more you start exchanging ideas with people, 
the more you buy into the whole process and you begin to learn at a much faster rate. So lurking is, is a good thing. Um, some people tend to lurk a little too long to my, to my way of thinking, yeah. but you know, we all learn at, at different rates, which is something that, that we have to keep in mind. So we have to be very patient uh, for those people who are willing to learn, um, but are not ready yet to jump into it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, or the one thing that, that, that prevents progress in education. Um, the, the other thing is control. Uh, and, and, and both of those things don't exist in, in, in social media. You, you kind of have to leave your comfort zone and you have to give up control because um, it's 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 a little different way of learning. Other people have to bring ideas to you, or you can, you know, solicit ideas uh, from other people. But but it's you're not controlling it as as much as you would like to control it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and you're not the expert anymore. There are other people out there who who are experts in things that. Have that you may think you're very knowledgeable about, but it's like in the in the old west, there's always a gunslinger who is who is faster than you know than you. Um, in, in social media, there's always somebody who's smarter than you. Yeah. So the, the idea of, of getting out and sharing and looking for those people to tap into their knowledge and, and understand what it is they're they're doing, um, it, it, it's it's an adventure. You know, it's an adventure in, in learning, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. And if you were you were teaching in the classroom now. What would your classroom look like, and, and how would you engage and inspire your students to be the best that they can be? Um, I would engage, I would have students engaging in social media. I think um, my classroom would not con contain rows of desks as it did for thirty four years. That's the first thing I would get away with, uh, do away with. Um, I, I would have them working with their own devices, uh, teaching them how to develop their own professional learning networks or personal learning networks to control their, their learning. One of the things that we as educators have to keep in mind, our competition um, is is free information. We, we've always been the, the content experts up in front of the room, uh, and, and that's the role that we were supposed to fill. That's what we were, we were programmed to do. We couldn't make mistakes in front of the students. We had to be the experts. We had to be the, the go-to person in the room. And we had to be in control the entire time. Um, but to, to my way of thinking, if I took all of the knowledge of in my subject area that I had in my head and I poured it into each of the heads of my students, I would be limiting them because they, they've got more access to more information than I ever had hmm. through the Internet. So, so I, I think the role that we play as teachers is no longer the content expert in the front of the room, but someone who teaches students how to learn and how to learn properly. Um, the, the whole idea of critical thinking, the idea of, of being able to go to people and, and how to sort out the information that you're getting so that it's valid information. And, and being able to develop a personal learning network. If we've, if we've got kids early on, starting in the, in the elementary grades, developing their own personal learning networks as they go, by the time they, they get to college, they've carried this personal learning network with them the entire changes uh, because as you branch off to, to different interest areas you're, you're, you're grabbing on, on to other people um, so so that you're you're constantly growing you're constantly learning with a community and and that community travels with you because you've got access to them through your device